Um, okay, so my talk today is called Speed Wins, the basics of how to push more queries through each CPU core. Um, so, okay, during this talk, uh, we are going to see how we were able to reduce 99.96% uh, both the query time and the process data uh, in a real use case, okay? Um, or which is the same, 99.96% uh, the, the cost associated to a query. Um, so yeah, well, I think this would be interesting, but... <laughs> Okay, so in this case, um, we were working with a, a data source a table with 258 million rows and 13.8 gigabytes. Um, this data was sorted and indexed by company ID. Uh, the process uh, we defined was we perform a join to add um, a column with the country. We calculate um, the quantity per hour, type of event and country and we filter the needed data, in this case was based on the date and the event type until we get the output, okay? That's, that's the, the process we, we had defined. At that time, well, that's the query. If you are uh, interested, I can show you later because I don't have really uh, much time, but... Um, so at that time, I don't know if you can see it, but the query was uh, processing 6.76 uh, gigabytes 70, uh, 67 gigabytes, sorry, uh, reading 193 million roads, and it was taking uh, 2.27 seconds. So if this query uh, was called uh, once per second uh, during a whole day, uh, it would mean um, like 40, uh, around 40,000 40, dollars per day, okay? So that's pretty much, uh, I know. So um, when we saw that, we, we thought, okay, we have to improve this query. So uh, normally when we face this kind of situation, when, when we have to improve a query, what we do is go backwards, okay? And we review the transformation process we, we define, uh, checking that what we in, in TinyBear call the main rules when working with data are applied and uh, checking the schemas um, we define. Um, so, okay, which are these main rules? I'm gonna go quickly over them because we have um, a guide in our documentation where this is explained with examples and so on. So um, you can check it if you want. So rule number one is the best data is the one you don't write. So if you are not gonna need uh, some data, just uh, don't save it. Um, rule number two, the second base data is the one you don't, you don't read. So you should always try to apply filters using the indexes as soon as possible. Uh, rule number three is sequential reads are 100 uh, times faster. So um, you should sort your data based on the queries you are going to perform. Rule number four is the, late date, the, the less data you process after read the better. So um, well, after filtering with the index you should also try to discard as much information as possible in rows and in columns. And rule number five, complex operation later in the processing pipeline. Okay, so first you filter the data and once you have discarded uh, some data, you can like perform the complex, uh, the more complex operation. So if we apply these rules to our uh, process, we have to filter first, then perform the join and then calculate the quantity. That's the query. Um, so, at that time, the query was uh, reading and processing the same amount of data, but uh, the query time uh, was reduced to around 0 0.75 uh, seconds. So, well, we, we improved the query time, but we were processing the same data, so the cost was the same. So, we should focus now on how to reduce this uh, data we were processing. So uh, then we focused on the schemas, okay? Um, as I said, uh, based on rule number two and number three, uh, we should try to filter always first based on, uh, on the indexes and uh, we, we should have the data sorted by um, the query we are going to perform. So in this case, we should add 
the event and the daytime to the sorting key because we were filtering based on that. So just by changing this schema, um, the query were then uh, processing 76 megabytes and uh, reading 1.67 million rows. And the query time was reduced to 0.2 seconds. Okay, so the cost associated to the query were um, were now 400, uh, around 460 dollars, which is a great improvement, right? From 40,000 <laughs> per day, yeah. But um, we still have an eyes up over sleep, which is materialized views. Um, so long story short, a materialized view is um, is a transformation is a combination of a transformation pipe, a pipe that um, which reads from a origin data source, transforming uh, transforms the the data and then a destination data source where this transformed data is saved. Um, materialized views uh, work incrementally, meaning that each time a uh, new data is um, ingested in the origin data source, the transformation pipe is triggered and the transform data is saved. Okay, So that means that this transformation um, doesn't have to be performed on query time, but the, uh, this is already calculated, so it's super fast. So we just create a materialized view with a join and the calculation of the quantity. And the query at that moment was processing 333 kilobytes, reading around uh, 8,000 rows, and the query was one millisecond. And, and that's one millisecond. I mean, it's not a typo or a mistake or whatever, okay? It's, it's like that. So the cost associated was now, uh, were now, uh, were then $18 uh, per day. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would say that well, the main uh, conclusion could be that in 10 minutes uh, I saved you like $40,000, <laughs> okay? So you can thank me later for that. Um, no, uh, just kidding. But um, as you have been able to see, um, this is a super really low effort process with a really, really high reward. Um, and it can boost your project significantly. Um, good thing is that our customers are able to do this by themselves. This is, uh, for example, a real use case uh, made uh, by one of our customers. And they were able to reduce 99.99% uh, the process data. So this is, and the cost, so it's pretty awesome. Thank you.